but you know what isn't help? Some games. Here are my top three 2020 games. This is a mobile game that popped up in my recommended. I honestly didn't expect much from a mobile game considering most are quite boring, but this one proved me wrong. This game's charm comes from the little jokes that are sprinkled throughout, and also references to some other forms of media. The one you see on your screen right now is referencing Full Metal Alchemist, but there's also Animal Crossing and a bunch more. Now for the story. Here's a basic rundown. You're a guardian that is training to protect the royals. One day, a bunch of invaders and a dark mage separates you from your companions, with the exception of the princess. Your ultimate goal is to find the queen, which is the princess's sister. For that to happen, you gotta get stronger. This game is separated by chapters, and in each chapter, you're introduced to multiple characters that you're able to get and add to your own team. The story is cute, just like a bunch of other JRPG games, but it also can get serious at times. Most of the characters in this game actually have story behind them. Most characters can be acquired through story quests, but those that can't, you gotta... you gotta... you gotta... The good news is that Gotcha takes a back seat in this game, which is great because you can get ridiculously strong characters by leveling up, evolution stones, awakening stones, and so much more. So there's a lot of options in terms of leveling up your character. Each chapter is pretty short, which then causes some awkward timing in the story. For example, in chapter 3, one of the characters says, Oh, we've been through so much together, you and I. Now we're best friends. But you spent at most 40 minutes with them, so... There were moments where the side story was predictable and pretty cliche. For example, in chapter 8, where uh, you do some quests for this snowman. You could just immediately tell what the ending's gonna be. I mean, it still made me sad, but like, you know, next time you could die in a less predictable way. <laughs> And that's not, uh, that's not spoilers, by the way, that's, that's super insignificant, I don't- Oh, and this is the exciting thing. Every month, there's a new event that goes on, uh, with new side story, new characters, new weapons, and, uh, new gotcha chances. And if you ever played this game, you'll be entranced by the music. The battle music goes so hard, man, it just eggs you on a kick some. This game is often compared to Breath of the Wild. While I could see it in its climbing, its stamina, and its hillotrills, other than these arguably weak claims, this game swerves in a whole different direction. At first, the upgrade ability seems jarring to a new player. I mean, with leveling up your character, your weapons, your artifacts, the ascension, and the three XP appliers, now I could see why it's very intimidating. However, I see this as a good thing, because that means hitting a difficulty wall is really hard in this game. Not saying that there aren't any hard enemies. So a lot of games have objectives that you have to do every single day, and usually that gets repetitive and boring. However, Genshin Impact manages to have so much variety that only one or two get tedious. However, it's still worth it in the end because you get upgrade materials, and also Primo Gems. And we'll get to the Primo Gems later. Now Genshin Impact is framed to be addictive. Similar to how Candy Crush has its limited play uses and Guardian Tales with its coffee, what separates these two games from Candy Crush is that in Guardian Tales, they give you 100 coffee every day so you're rarely to run out. And in Genshin Impact, there are many missions that you can do without using original resin. Original resin is usually used for upgradability, but there are quests in each city that increases your reputation without the cost of original resin. But the rewards sometimes still go to upgradability, there are also monthly bounty points that you can collect through logging in, using original resin, mining some ores, and a bunch of other stuff that you can do. These points can all go towards a certain weapon that you can get after you reach level 30. On the way there, however, you can also get some normal wishes, some mora, and some XP appliers. 
As great as this game is, I wish there were more mobility that was allowed to travel faster between waypoints. I understand that waypoints are meant to be fast travel points, but everything in between seems sometimes tedious. A great example, and the only example, of great mobility in this game is Venti's Skyward Sonnet. It lets him fly up in the air without using any stamina, and also you can recover some while in the process. This could be used for repeated ground strikes, climbing, or giving you an extra boost for gliding which is super useful when traversing the map for a quicker and more fun experience because you get to be creative with its uses. Perhaps an electro character can run faster or zip across some interval of the map while doing damage, which is similar to Fischl's Oz special. Or a power character can maybe do a super jump of some sort that explodes the original location with flames while launching the player, and the player could choose the distance of that launch. And now to the dark secret of this game, the Prima Gems. Prima gems are used for wishes, and wishes are called wishes because saying, ah, uh, a loot box I would have gotten venti. That just doesn't roll off the tongue. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna open up a wish right now, so I'm gonna open up the venti one. Give me something good. You get venti? <laughs> oh, I see what they're doing. Oh, I got a character? Oh, oh they got him! Official. Do you get what they did? Because I don't. Oh, I got, I got not, Venti, bro. bro. bro I got Venti. Me? Oh my god! Did you actually get Venti? I got it first try. I'm so upset. <laughs> I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. Oh, that's awesome. With all the gotcha and the limited mobility, it all seems that this game could be very slow in pace. But you know, maybe that's a good thing because. Wherever you are, whichever environment, be it Monster or the uh, that's right, the uh, it's all just so nice to look at. Alright, my favorite game this year has got to go to Your Turn to Die. Absolutely no competition. This game is such a beaming gem. Originally released in 2017 by the legendary storyteller Nanki Dai, this game places you in the shoes of a high school girl that gets kidnapped along with her best friend. She meets mysterious people that are stuck in the same situation as her. That being in a mysterious building without any exits. Or, so it seems. And the only way to escape is through voting. However, I'm getting ahead of myself. The building has multiple floors, and each floor with its own floor master. The first floor master is Sue Miley, 
Which as a side note, she's not my favorite. That, that comes later. So to introduce the characters, Joe Tazuna is your best friend. Keiji Shinogi is a detective. Kana Kazuchi, uh, she's just the bucket girl. Kitaro is a baseball player. So Hiori is a job hopper. Now Egakoro, an art college student. Kai Sato, a homemaker. Genubushi, 6th grader. Kazumi Mishima, high school art teacher. Riko Yabasame, singer-songwriter. And then, one mystery character that gets revealed later on. Some of these characters seem shady because of their unshared past, or purely in appearance. So throughout the floor, you'll solve minigames that are not only meant to entertain you for a bit, but also adds on so much to the already twisted narrative. They also cause you stress, but not as much stress as what comes during the main game. Voting is the system by which you try to survive in the game within this game. A negotiation period is given to the player to reason out anything amongst themselves and the NPCs. Although seemingly a boring concept, it is anything but. Most of the character-driven content is crammed into this short, stressful period. So many truths and lies will be uncovered during this period. You're going to question everyone around you because of it. And also, you're going to question the entire system. Why was it made? And why are you here with it? Some of these questions will be answered, but twice as many will reappear. Which makes you suspicious of everyone, but also hating yourself for it because that's just how amazing the characters are made. However, that's only the character narrative. The plot narrative is equally great, if not much better. The amount of mysteries this game has forces you to actively guess what's going to happen next. And dare I say, on par with some of the mysteries of Gravity Falls. Especially in the later floors, you'll need to think on a dime in order to tell who lives and who dies. Listen, I can't say much more without spoiling such a great story, but I genuinely got excited and sad over some of the outcomes of the characters. But know that this is my favorite game of all time. As the creation of this video, the final part of Chapter 3 is yet to be released, and the story right now is an all-time high, so I'm super excited for Nankidai to complete this chapter. I'm dying to know what's going to happen next, and so are my friends. I might make a full review on this game, or any game that appeared in this video, so uh, please like the video if you... If that's something you want, and... Oh, as a side note, only two games have made me actually sad about their characters. Persona 5, and this. So, uh, so please trust me, and play this game. You will not regret it.